A lot of concerns about a freight recession when it comes to the U.S., especially with rates declining. When we talk about the global supply chain, you obviously have customers all across the globe, including here in the United States. What are you seeing? Well, for, first of all, um, what we're seeing is a, you just covered it with Apple as a good section that you covered. China plus one is starting to happen. It's, an, it's not an absolute move away, but we are seeing growth and growth continues inbound to the U.S. So customers are shifting part of their supply chain to locations like Taiwan, Vietnam, India, which you just covered. But the biggest winner we're seeing is Mexico. Oh, so Mexico. So I did want to talk to you about this, specifically reshoring. So we have some data from you um, showing that the trade lane, when it comes from, when it goes to Mexico to the U.S., has seen increases so far this year. In January and February, double-digit increases. Last month, a 9% increase along that trade lane, according to the data from you and your customers. What does that mean when it comes to reshoring? Is that ramping up, or are we expecting to see a bigger jump later on in the year? It's, it's not an absolute move away from China, I would say, just to be honest. But we are starting to see it ramp up. It will obviously grow as it goes towards the end of the year um, and then as we move into 2024 as well. So when you say that it's not a complete move away from China, are there certain sectors that are looking to move to Mexico to get closer to their customers? Absolutely. Consumer electronics, and we're seeing much more in the auto part uh, and engineering and manufacturing. All right, certainly something to watch. And when we talk about those different sectors, um, you know, I, I know obviously you have a business with uh, air delivery and also ground delivery. Um, yeah. Is there a preferred method? Obviously, a lot of companies want to get closer to the United States to cut down on supply chain issues. But is there a preferred method? Is it truck? Is it rail? Is it air to get those things from Mexico into the United States? Um, well, there's, it's a bit of all, but I would say for us, what we're enjoying is the air component uh, of it, Frank. And, you know, we've seen, you, you said some of the numbers, but as of quarter one, we've seen 20% inbound growth just into the U.S. from Mexico, which is, again, a big winner. But we're also seeing movement in Vietnam. Uh, apparel is moving, more and more apparel moving to Vietnam, tech to Taiwan, and as I just said, some tech uh, to Mexico as well. And then we're seeing Thailand uh, as well jumping up in the space. So, yeah, just growth happening in all the sectors, and we're breaking through. Another one that we didn't talk about was Brazil. We're seeing the auto industry and outbound growth into the U.S. of 40 percent, U.S. to Brazil, apologies, of 40 percent in auto. All right, that's an interesting thing to follow. Also, that, that China plus plus strategy we're talking about. Something we'll have that's to have right. you back on to talk about. Obviously, that's going to be a continued story, as you mentioned. More companies are, are shifting production away from China. Another thing I want to yeah. talk to you about is electric vehicles. Yesterday, we had our Phil LeBeau on with the United States considering kind of tightening its standards when it comes to emissions. Um, what are you doing when it comes to electric vehicles? What's the strategy for DHL, not only here in the United States, but globally? Yeah, I mean, we have over 20,000, 27,000 electric vehicles operating today. And the strategy is basically to double down. We have a goal by 2030 of where we need to be uh, as an organization. We, we want to have over 80 percent of our vehicles across the world being electrified. OK, what about e-commerce? Um, obviously, a big just macro trend globally, especially here in the United States. It's cooled a bit as we've seen people just kind of get back to going to stores and also shifting their spendings from goods to services. What are you seeing when it comes to global e-commerce, specifically cross-border e-commerce, which is your specialty? Yes, yeah, still, you know, Frank's still growing. Obviously, it's growing even higher than the levels it was pre-pandemic. Slowed down a bit. Uh, but what we have seen is continued growth in the space of B2B e-commerce, um, which right. for us is starting to jump up. So, Mike Parr, we've got to get, let you go. But one last word. Uh, we're worried about a global, uh, excuse me, a U.S. freight recession. Are you seeing signs that there could be a global freight recession as well? Uh, look, um, you know, we, we've, uh, we're well accustomed to change globally. Uh, economic crisis, as an example, Russia, Ukraine. Uh, and it's really our job to help our customers navigate during these times and unlock growth opportunities like we saw with e-commerce.